Hi, I'm Anjali Marto and I'm a consultant dermatologist and this is my no-nonsense guide to skincare jargon. Hypoallergenic is a term that you'll often find on skincare products. It is there to imply to you that the product is less likely to cause allergies than something else. The truth is that there is no actual standard test to prove that one product is less allergenic than another. So in actual fact, the meaning of this word is very little. Non-comedogenic literally means will not block pores. And you often find it on the skincare and makeup products for people that have got acne or blemish prone skin. With non-comedogenic products, they are less likely to block your pores than something that doesn't carry this label. It's not a 100% guarantee, but it is worthwhile checking out this label if your skin is troublesome and acne prone. Clinically proven is often found on anti-aging products in particular, or products that are there to make you think this has gone through so much scientific testing and lots of rigorous kind of analysis has taken place. Unfortunately, there is no legislation for clinically proven, and more often than not, these aren't really good quality, randomized controlled scientific trials to prove a product is working. So be healthily skeptical when you see this label. The concept of detoxing for skin has become really popular, and unfortunately, it doesn't really mean anything. You cannot detox through your skin cells. Your body has your kidneys and your liver, and these are your detoxification organs. No real detoxification goes through the skin. Natural and organic skincare has become increasingly popular, and if you look at makeup and skincare trends, it doesn't look like it's one that's about to go away anytime soon. The thing with natural and organic skincare is there is no legal definition for either of these terms. There are lots of different certification bodies that exist in the UK, but even they don't agree on what makes a product natural or organic. If you're looking for a product that is natural, the best way to go about doing this is to look at the ingredients list. In terms of product ingredients, a product is generally made up of the top three to five ingredients that you will see on the label. If the top three to five ingredients have got long synthetic chemical sounding names, chances are it's not particularly natural in nature. It's interesting because many people feel that somehow natural skincare is better or safer for your skin than synthetic or chemical based skincare. And this is a bit of a misconception. And the reason for that is that in the UK, all of the products that we use are very, very tightly governed by the European Union. And the concentrations of these synthetic products are actually done at levels that we know are safe to use. The problem with natural skincare products is it's much more subject to quality variation. So first of all, there's no standard definition. So what is natural to me may not be natural to you. But secondly, if you have got a natural product, you don't know that the product was harvested at the right time. You don't know if it was transported at the right temperature. You don't know what processing methods were used to extract that particular bit of the plant or the fruit or the flower that you might need. Whereas with a synthetic product, you know exactly what you're getting. One of the main issues that I see, particularly in my clinics with natural skincare products, is they are generally very, very high in essential oils or fragrances. And those two specific things alone are some of the commonest reasons why we see skin allergy. So natural does not necessarily mean safer for your skin or better for your skin. Chemicals in skincare are interesting and I think people see that label and it makes them feel very alarmed or very concerned. The thing with chemicals is that they're found in everything. You know, even plant-based products naturally have a chemical structure. The thing about chemicals is that what makes them dangerous potentially is their dose or their concentration. So even water, which is a chemical, can be a poison in a high enough dose or a concentration to the human body. So we just need to be mindful of the fact that chemical-free just isn't a thing. Retinoids are a very popular ingredient found in anti-aging skincare. Retinoids are essentially a class of compounds that are based on vitamin A, and they are one of the few ingredients that have got really good scientific data behind them. They can, over time, improve fine lines and wrinkles and pigmentation. So a lot of the signs that we associate with premature aging of the skin. When you're looking for a retinoid-based product, there's lots of different ones on the market. 
Retinoids specifically are prescription-based products that you will not be able to buy that will be available from a dermatologist or a cosmetic doctor. What you can buy are weaker alternatives, so things like retinol or things like retinol esters, so retinol palmitate and retinol acetate are common ingredients that you can see in skincare. When you're looking for a retinol-based product, my recommendation would be to look for a concentration of at least 0.1%. Using anything lower than that probably isn't going to have any benefit for your skin. When you're using a retinol, it should ideally be used at night time and applied to freshly cleansed skin. And a pea-sized amount should be adequate to cover the face and potentially the neck if you want to treat that area also. When you start introducing retinols into your skincare routine, it is important that you build up gradually. So maybe think about using them once or twice a week initially and try and build up to every night. The reason for that is that retinols can cause marked dryness and irritation and peeling and scaling of the skin if you start using too much too quickly. If you find that your skin feels quite dry or quite tight after using a retinol product, what you can do is wait 20 minutes and then apply a moisturiser to the skin afterwards. Acids have become really, really popular in skincare. It's interesting because the dermatological community has been using them for many, many years, but I think people are now getting really interested in science-backed skincare. There are a number of different types of acids found and that are available for you to use, and it can be confusing to navigate which is the right one for your skin type. The first type is an AHA, or an alpha-hydroxy acid. And alpha-hydroxy acids are normally sourced from plants. They're things like glycolic acid, or lactic acid, or mandelic acid. They're the popular ones that you will find. Alpha-hydroxy acids are really good at brightening the skin, at chemically exfoliating the skin, and also helping with pigmentation. They can make your skin a little bit more sensitive to sunlight, so it is important that if you are using an alpha-hydroxy acid-based product, a face wash or a serum or a toner, that you are using sunscreen in the morning as well. Then you've got your beta-hydroxy acids, and the commonest beta-hydroxy acid you will come across is salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is great for acne or oily skin. What you find with salicylic acid is it can penetrate the pores and it can break down the oil and decongest the skin. Salicylic acid also can make you sensitive to the sun, so again, it is worthwhile making sure that you're wearing a good quality SPF whilst you're using this product. Then the third really common acid that we tend to see is hyaluronic acid. And hyaluronic acid is very different to the alpha and the beta hydroxy acids. Hyaluronic acid is a humectant, and what that means is it's a type of moisturizing agent. It binds a thousand times its weight in water, so it's really good at drawing out moisture from the deeper layers of the skin, and potentially from the environment as well, particularly if you're in a very high humidity environment. Hyaluronic acid is a great moisturizer to rehydrate and plump up the skin temporarily. Thanks for watching, and I really hope you've enjoyed my no-nonsense guide to skincare jargon. For more videos from the pool, click subscribe.